Misconceptions take root in our minds very easily. It takes a determined spirit to weed out all the brainwashing and programming we have taken on. Many people never question certain ideas or conceptions they have. They stop at the phrase itself without any further investigation, almost as though the phrase itself has some kind of magic that stops them from examining it. People need to be careful of confusing what is true with what they want to be true. Just because we all want to live in a just world doesn't mean we actually do live in a just world. Great problems arise when we take our misconceptions and assert them as fact. Remember what Mohandas Gandhi said when he was asked what he thought of Western civilization. I think it would be a very good idea. With wit and insight, he was clearly pointing out that the West had not yet achieved civilization, given that it was still engaged in land and resource theft via colonization and genocide against active and indigenous peoples. Likewise, how many things in this list do we proudly hold up as reality, despite the fact we haven't yet achieved them? Here is a list of six massive misconceptions many people possess but have usually never deeply questioned. The rule of law is a hackneyed phrase. It's one those giant misconceptions usually trotted out by people intent on proving how richer first world nations are better than poorer second and third world nations, or how no one can supposedly get away with crime because we are all equal before the law. Yes, I would prefer to live in a society where disputes can be resolved without resorting to gang-style violence. However, even nations with the purported rule of law still have deal with gang problems, and they do this by centralizing power all under one roof, claiming a monopoly on violence, and calling it government. When you replace lots of smaller gangs with one bigger gang, it is doubtful you have increased your safety or freedom at all. In fact, in many ways, you have decreased it, since you have created an organization with the power to enslave you on a far grander scale. Remember the words of George Bush Sr. when he first publicly called for a new world order. He boasted that, we have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. He actually used the phrase rule of law. Given his past as a CIA director, oil profiteer, drug runner, serial rapist and mass murderer, how credible are his claims that the rule of law will result in a fair and just society? The fact is that we live in two worlds, one whose members or citizens are punished by not living by the rule of law, and another where the administrators of the law escape punishment because they control the enforcement of the laws. The judicial system is not pure and above the law, it has its own members who cover up crimes and who are involved in the worldwide pedophilic ring. Elections are stolen by rigged machines. The entities and corporations supposed to be controlled and constrained by the rule of law are the ones writing the laws. Remember how the banks write the laws. Remember how Big Pharma controls the FDA and CDC. There is one law for the rich and one law for the rest. Additionally, as Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu said, the greater the number of laws and enactments, the more thieves and robbers there will be. Many laws today don't exist to catch the real criminals, but rather act as traps to enslave innocent and harmless people in victimless crimes by way of revenue extraction or imprisonment. The rule of law. What a misconception. Before I continue the video, please smash that like button for me. Thank you. Misconceptions number 2. The political authority of government. Another one of those rather large misconceptions carried around by the average person is that government has the unquestionable authority to rule. The government's supposed authority or mandate evaporates into thin air. There is no producible piece of paper that you sign called a social contract, there is no real consent where there is no real way to opt out, there is no legal or moral justification for a majority to forcibly impose its views and will on a minority, and lastly, government does not deserve a special moral status just because it provides benefits to some, which we may or may not need and want. Careful examination of government shows that its purported political authority is built on a house of sand and has no solid basis. The truth is that government rules by the barrel of a gun, and its authority is utterly illegitimate. Misconceptions number 3. The scientific method. Another phrase that gets thrown around, like some three-word argument winner, is the scientific method. This is often invoked in defense of criminal or even heinous things and activities, like prescription drugging of the population, vaccines, GMOs and geoengineering. In even more extreme cases, we have the deployment of science as a weapon to serve crazy schemes, such as eugenics-based programs of surreptitious sterilization and depopulation, space programs, and the shape of the Earth. Science itself as a discipline is not to blame for this, the issue is those pushing forward dangerous agendas under the rubric of science. Yet, most people will blindly bow down to the white-coated priests of science without any further investigation. 
How can we trust the scientific method when there is such a massive amount of fraudulent scientific research, as exposed by insiders, like former big pharma directors, doctors, medical journal editors and other experts? How can we trust the much-praised scientific hierarchy of evidence when it is so easy to get around the back door by various means of fraud, whether it be outright omission, distortion by changing data sets, and many of the other tricks used to change real science into corporate junk science? How can we trust science when it tells us the vaccine saves more hypothetical lives overall, despite the fact they injure, paralyze and kill real people all the time? The doctors of allopathy or Western Rockefeller medicine once labored under horrendous misconceptions, such as practicing bloodletting as a medical and surgical technique and advocating the smoking of tobacco as fine for your health. Was any of this real science? If not, how do we know that today's science is any better? Science, although it tries to present itself as a rational force for the advancement of knowledge, often succumbs to the trap of falling into dogma. Science has a hard time distinguishing its facts from its theories. Relativity is a theory. Big Bang is a theory. But they will be replaced by better ones as our awareness expands. Science wants its one miracle, for example, the Big Bang, to explain the world, just give me one miracle, and I'll explain everything. It is doubtful whether scientific dogma is any better than religious dogma. Science demands that the world be seen in a certain way, and brands anyone outside of its beliefs, as a denier or heretic. Ultimately, how much can we really trust mainstream Western materialistic science when it denies the existence of anything it cannot see and measure? Even Einstein said that the field is the sole governing agency of the particle. Consciousness is the very basis of matter and life in the universe, and yet science in general refuses to even accept its existence. Next of the list of grand misconceptions is the idea of the greater good as it is applied to government, where it is known as collectivism. In small groups, this method often works well, and sometimes the majority rules approach is the best. However, when you try to translate that to large societies or nations, you run into problems. At first the greatest good of the greatest number seems so obvious and beneficial. However, collectivism prioritizes the group over the individual. Socialism, Marxism, Communism and Fascism are all collectivist political ideologies that essentially dictate that all individuals, causes and other loyalties, for example, family, nation, religion, are subservient to the state. They demand that everyone take part in the new order, and that if necessary the individual must be sacrificed for the greater good. In extreme collectivist societies, the state is everything, and the individual is nothing, an absurd inversion of reality. As an interesting aside, collectivism has something in common with Satanism here, in that both invert reality. Black is white, war is peace and pain is pleasure. Collectivism allows for majority rule. A more intelligent and peaceful minority can easily be outvoted and turned upon by an emotional, low-minded majority, which is precisely why the US was set up as republic, with inveal projections for individuals, not a democracy. The whole concept of the greater good or the group is abstract. In reality, there is no such tangible thing as a group. There are only individuals who make up a group. The same goes for the state. In reality, there are only people who make up the state. When you elevate the imagined needs of an abstract entity, the group or the state, above the real needs of its living members, you open the door for all sorts of atrocities. The truth is that only by respecting and enshrining the individual above all else, can we achieve the greater good. Remember also that one of the three most chilling conspiracy documents or accounts ever published, the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, proclaim how the elders or controllers will enslave the masses through, you guessed it, collectivism. They actually use this term. The terms conspiracy theory and conspiracy theorist were developed by the CIA in the 1960s as a way to counter genuine examination into the JFK assassination. They are weaponized terms which represent a cunning method to discredit truthseekers, truthtellers and investigators. This diversionary scheme has worked well, people often shut down once they hear this phrase and stop thinking critically. These terms have become falsely associated, in popular culture, with madness, craziness and deluded thinking. Of course, the corollary to the idea of so-called deluded conspiracy theories is that things just happen by chance. Thus, those who deride conspiracy theories, often with little or no investigation, can be labeled coincidence theorists. They adhere to coincidence theory which blindly believes there is no new world order agenda, events just occur randomly. It is hard for the average person who feels compassion and empathy to understand that the world is run by psychopaths with a deadened conscience and ability to feel. So, the average person can't quite believe that anyone could be so evil, diabolical, ruthless or organized to be plotting a world takeover, even though the scheme is quite advanced. 
This inherent bias in most people works to the great advantage of the New World Order manipulators, who are in essence protected from their crimes by widespread disbelief. As Marshall McLuhan once said, only the small secrets need to be protected. The big ones are kept secret by public incredulity. Coincidence theory is really a way for people to shield themselves from the ugly truth so they can continue living in denial. Interestingly, it aligns with materialistic and atheistic mainstream science, which insists that life is just a random occurrence and that humanity is nothing special. Misconceptions number 6. Disbelieving the scope of the conspiracy. Despite the misconceptions of coincidence theorists, there are positive signs. The world is awakening. There are many people working on different fronts to bring down the control grid and create better, fairer and freer systems. People around the world are actively protesting the corporatocracy toxic vaccines, GMOs, surveillance, smart meters, geoengineering and more. However, there still remains a fundamental block in the way of a deeper understanding. The last misconception on this list is the biggest one. Many people still can't quite grasp the enormity and extent of the worldwide conspiracy. All the manifestations of dysfunction in our world today, political corruption, radiation, bioterrorism, false flag events, mind control, pedophilia, Satanism, are all fundamentally connected. They are not random and unconnected events. Think GMOs and geoengineering are unrelated, then why does Monsanto hold patents for aluminum-resistant crops? Think false flag shootings, big pharma drugging and mind control are unrelated, then why do these patsy shooters have records of taking prescription drugs? Think pedophilia and Satanism are unrelated, then why do various satanic ritual abuse survivors give accounts of being at places, like Bohemian Grove and either, witnessing or being forced to participate in dark sacrificial rituals? We need to connect the dots and sense the deeper connection here. Dig deeper and you will discover a core group of individuals who are coordinating all of this. Dig deeper and you will discover it is the same MWO individuals engaging in all of it. Political manipulation, propaganda dissemination, geoengineering, mind control, sex trafficking, pedophilia, war, genocide, suppression of free energy technology and the space program. Dig deeper and you will discover these same MWO individuals summoning and channeling dark forces through these rituals and being overtaken by them. Dig even deeper and you will discover these dark forces, archons, which are non-human, non-organic, non-physical entities, resemble something like AI or artificial intelligence. They are totally heartless and without compassion, like a parasite, they are trying to suck dry and destroy their host, you and I, and the rest of humanity. As best as we can tell at this point in our research, they are the distortion at the source of all the connected and interrelated unconsciousness or evil in our midst. Until we grasp the magnitude of the situation, we will be fighting it on isolated fronts, unlikely to be as effective. Beware of misconceptions. Misconceptions abound. The faster we can learn to dig beyond a term or phrase, the faster we will learn the truth. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.